Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to paint textures based on curves that are running down a mesh. As per usual, you can download some example files on my Procygen website and support my work on Patreon. Now, in a new Houdini scene, we are going to create a geometry node and inside use a file node to load in some mesh from your hard disk. And if you don't have one, you can still use the pick hat. If I middle mouse on my file node, I can see that my mesh is pretty large. So I want to scale it down by a factor of 0.01. And when activating the grid, I can tell that I also need to rotate my mesh by minus 90 degrees around the X axis. Next, I see that there are some stretched edges, so we could remesh the entire surface with a resolution of 0.005 with four iterations for a more regular topology and then the entire mesh should be triangulated in a nicer way. I also can see that the normals are oriented inwards, so let's reverse them. And by pressing spacebar 5, we can see that we are not having any UVs at the moment, so I use the lapse auto UV. And in order to get a non-intersecting uh, set of UV coordinates, I switch the method to cluster. And you can see down here, it's already calculating a nice way of unwrapping this surface. I don't need to see the UV map, so we can just click here to deactivate it. And now the next step would be to just scatter a, a bunch of points on the surface. And to make it look more like rain, we should mask the top so I would like to see which kind of surfaces are or have a feature, so mask by feature that is being seen by pressing enter. And I can disable the directional mask if I want to, but I think what I get initially is quite good already. So this would be just the top surfaces with most likely to rain on the surfaces oriented to the top. The name of the mask is mask, so I can just use this in a scatter node. I want to set my density scale to 100 and set the density attribute to my mask. So that way I have a bunch of uh, points. We can still play with not relaxing them or increasing the density, but now let's more focus on how to make them run down. So what I will do after the mask is to measure a gradient. So let's bring that in between and switch the element type to points and set the gradient to source attribute P for position and just pick the Y component. If you press enter again, we can zoom in and you will see the points or the arrows are pointing upwards so if we reverse this direction, we can make the points run down. You can see that the scatter node also has the gradient attribute already. So all we will need is a for loop, which uh, will refer back to the mesh using a ray node. And the second input will be connected to the mesh and we choose the minimum distance, which makes the point stick to the surface and we can import attribute from hits. So that way um, we get the gr new gradient at the new positions when we slide down. So in an attribute wrangle, we can now update the point position. We subtract the normalized V at gradient. We're using a subtraction because we want to run down the surface and multiply the gradient by 0.01. So you should now see these points traveling downwards. Let's 
merge each iteration to actually see this and use some more iterations. All right, this would be the streak and we can either use the trail SOP or the enumerate SOP. So I will use the enumerate SOP before and the add SOP later. I've set the index to points and in the add node I connect these points by attribute called index. So that way I have curves and if there are some uh, jittered areas, we can just smooth these curves out. So now the more exciting part would be how to transfer these curves into a texture. And a texture map can be created based on a two-dimensional volume. We will set it to a vector so it can hold R, G and B and name it capital C so it can be easily read into COPS later on. I set the initial value to one so we can see better what we're doing and I will reduce it to a two-dimensional volume and set the resolution to 1K or multiply it by two to get 2K. Other than that, we will use a volume wrangle which is connected with the first input to the volume of course but the second input will be connected back to the mesh and the third input would be connected to the curves. So first input is the volume, second input is the mesh and the third input would be the curves. Now let's try to come up with the most minimal solution first inside the volume wrangle. We uh, use a bounding box BB using the rel bbox function on our own input based on the world position we can first set the vector at C to BB so that way if you set it to BB.x you should see a gradient from left to right and if you set this to BBY, it should go from bottom to top. We want to use this as a UV coordinate. I call it UVW and set this explicitly to BBX, BBY and zero. Now, we use this coordinate to now uh, find out the world position of our mesh or at these specific locations based on our UV map. So let's create a vector called POS and we sample the UVs. So we want to sample the position based on the UVs of the other mesh and we will provide our UVs against it. So UV sample to the input number one. We want the world position of the location of the mesh. We use its UV coordinates and provide our own UV coordinates to be matched. So now if you assign the position to V at C, you should see this is the X component of the world position on our mesh. You can uh, see this position X, Y and Z or the entire vector here uh, displayed in gray. And we can also already uh, set this to null and out and use COPS to import this volume. I can call it tex for texture and use the SOP import inside to bring the SOP out, the null object in, and I will click on set resolution and set planes from SOP. And you can already see we get these world positions in full color. So R, G and B are coded for the X, Y, Z positions respectively. All right, we're not quite done as you can tell. 
we would like to know the distance from this position to these curves in 3D. So let's now use the XYZ dist function referring to the input 2 based on our mesh position and then we can quickly test what this looks like. So if you click back on the out node for example you see a fading which is um, I think black right on the curves and it's fading to white when we are further away. So let's do this more precisely using a smooth function between 0, 0 and 0 0.01 based on the distance. So now we should have a sharper mask and you can see these black strokes. If we want to invert this we use 1.0 minus smooth and this would be the gradients and now you can redefine it by fitting this from 0.005 to 008 or maybe even make this uh, smaller as you wish. Now in order to also get some colors we want to create some color which is random but based on the curve number. I will call it PR but I don't have it yet so I want the XYZ dist function to return the primitive number and maybe also the UV location. There are uh, arguments for that that get returned PR and UV so we will just append PR and UV and we will also create these variables PR and vector UV. Now what we should get is a uh, color multiplied by the mask. So now if you switch over to the composite view you should see colorful strokes or contours running down there. And we would like to see this also on the mesh surface so let's use a quick UV node or quick UV shade like this and we would like to refer to our COP node so you would put OP column in front of it and after this you would use slash out and this should then display the texture Let's see whether this works or not. Let's dive inside. So this is the map we have. You can also use a right click and save it on your hard disk. But usually this should work on the quick shade. And if it doesn't, then either the display of uh, textures is disabled or you can also try to use the labs quick material node and see whether this does a better job at displaying the texture. Yep, there it is. I can make it a bit more obvious by uh, switching the background to maybe gray and that way you see the colors we have created at the moment. And now in order to redefine this we can now set uh, or make the interpretation of the distance a bit more complex than what we have so far. So you could say, for example, based on the u-coordinate along this curve, you want it to start wider and get shorter over, uh, over the course or over the length of this contour. So let's try this. We have the uv here. And what we want to use as a multiplier, I will call this variable stroke. And we are going to use a ramp um, called stroke and it runs over UV's first component. So UV0 would be the U coordinate of the curve. Let's click here. Um, this is a multiplier. You can shape it however you like. And now what we can do is 
for example, uh, mess with the distance. So we can multiply the distance by the stroke and this should make it, as you can see, uh, wider on, on the, or towards the end. Or we could divide it, so this would make it uh, thinner. Let's see this. Yeah, you can see it's basically fading out now. And I prefer using B splines or at least some other interp uh, interpolation so you can start wide and then shrink it down like this, but keep a minimum like that. So let's see maybe something more extreme on the first uh, distance like this. And that would be just one example. Of course, we can also, um, instead of messing with the distance directly, we can also play with the in and out of the smooth function. So we could um, try something there. Um, multiplied by stroke, multiplied by stroke. And because this ramp is between zero and one, it should now get thinner. Let's uh, jump inside the composite view to get an update go out again and switch back to our quick material and then you should see some updates. For a more detailed approach, you, we can also, uh, you can also just refer to the files I've provided. Um, I spent some more time on uh, redefining the width there. Thank you for watching.